Welcome back to another episode of the NetOps Expert. I am very happy to be joined today by Jason Normandon, part of the DX NetOps product management team. Jason, welcome. Thank you, Jeremy. Happy to be here. Great. And once again, my name is Jeremy Rossbeck. I lead the DX NetOps product marketing team. And today we are talking about the experience driven knock. And that may be new to everybody, but First and foremost, as the title of this episode uh, says, I want to welcome everyone to the Experience Driven Knock. Jason and I are going to talk about what the Experience Driven Knock is, why it's important, why it's needed today, and why Broadcom leads the industry in this new uh, innovation around user experience network delivery. So Jason, I want to start off with the very first question we have. Why do you think it's so important for today's operations teams to focus on the user experience? I mean, don't they have application teams for that? Absolutely, they do certainly have application teams for that. And this, this question is, is not new. This question has been in the industry forever. Uh, and it's been in the industry as long as there's been a division within the IT organizations of having network teams, infrastructure teams, and application teams. Um, there's a lot of finger pointing that goes on for sure. And guess where the finger starts? It always starts at the network. Because uh, that's the most, uh, that's the easiest target. So it really is uh, a responsibility to, uh, for the network operations team to prove their innocence, if you will, to be able to understand uh, the experience across the network. Because uh, at the end of the day, they're providing those resources to deliver those application experiences. So if they're able to provide visibility to the applications teams when there is an issue that is not being impacted by network, well, that's going to provide you know a much faster triage experience, and that's going to give the ball. It's going to put the ball in the right court into the right team to be able to address the issue. Now, if it is a network issue, that visibility will be apparent uh, with the tools that we're, we're providing with the AppNeta interface and the, the the NetApps portal. We're going to allow operations to be able to view uh, easily view. Uh, that network experience, drill down to where those hot spots may be, identify the root cause or identify that that innocence factor, right? That mean time to innocence that we talk so much about, basically get the ball out of our, our court. There's nothing we can do to help your application. You need to take care of it. Um, and I know we're going to get into showing some of that uh, workflow that you just talked about, but uh, this is a sub question of that that just came to me is, uh, we've talked about this before on previous NetOps expert uh, episodes, but um, what do you think is happening in the in our world today, even over the past few years, that is driving the need to focus on experience inside of network operations teams? Uh, well, it, it's it's really a lack of control um, by the operations teams. The, the the networks that they their enterprise users and the users are traversing are no longer uh, fully owned by these operations teams, right? It's no longer within the fall walls of the data center. You know, the, the days of accessing applications through a VPN connectivity into my data center, um, those still exist, but they're, they're a shrinking minority of the use cases. It really is about SaaS applications and cloud resources. Uh, and that, that infrastructure is virtually invisible to the operations team, so they really are uh, at a disadvantage uh, and that's where that finger pointing comes in once again because they can't prove that the issue is in my uh, you know AT&T or Comcast uh, internet connection uh, it's just looking like hey the, the traffic's not getting there reliably or, or performing. Yeah to expand on that um, and uh, I definitely have talked about this with others in past episodes but you know we see stats out there um, of course the pandemic has drove a lot of work from anywhere work from home uh, scenarios for every company and enterprise out there. But then, you know, the proliferation of moving workloads out of the four walls of the data center to cloud environments, to SaaS environments, we're all in the middle of it, right? We're using Office 365, we're using Microsoft Teams. Um, Jason, you and I, 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 I think you and I, honestly, this transmission that we're doing right now, this WebEx, this recording, if you think about the entire network path of this user experience that you and I are in the middle of right now, it's probably not even entering a data center. You know, it starts from my home office through my wireless router, out through my Verizon Fios residential connection over however many backhaul transit uh, routing ISPs and then into the Google Cloud, which is where Broadcom hosts most of, you know, our software and stuff like that. I didn't mention a private data center anywhere in there. Um, and like you mentioned, where is the control? I mean, network operations teams, they're not gods of any hop in that network path anymore. I can't even imagine what that's like and definitely uh, proves your point. And uh, I can't wait to get into what we're gonna show our customers on this episode here where we can, we can uh, provide them that visibility they don't have today. So 
All right, um, you queue up your demo, and this next question um, is definitely going to be important to that. I know a lot of customers ask us, um, what's the importance of routing user experience metrics through their standard operating procedures? And I know you know that term very well. NetOps has standard operating procedures, right? They have a way to start troubleshooting. They ping, they trace route, they tell net or, uh, you know, shell into a configuration of a device and see, look for any changes. And, so how do we incorporate user experience metrics into, into their day-to-day -day triage steps? Well, the, the important part is, is to uh, integrate this technology with the other technologies that are being monitored. It, it's, it's really impossible to do this, uh, this type of analysis in isolation, right? So I need to be able to understand uh, the experience alongside all of my other technologies, which means we can't have uh, different SOPs or different ways to interact with different types of alarms. We need to be able to follow standard practices and with our NetOps solution we really work hard to provide those uh, consistent uh, usability patterns that operation teams can learn once can easily train new engineers we know there's high turnover uh, in l1 operation organizations easily train and not have to rely on subject matter experts to solve all their problems all right why don't you show us what that looks like sure excellent so what we're looking here is our NetOps alarm console. This is gonna provide that real-time visibility into all the problems that are occurring within my network. Um, this is gonna include those ex that experience information as well as you know just standard monitoring that I'm doing, looking at you know uh, interface discards, looking at you know QoS metrics and, and being able to do that correlation. So it's really important again to unify that data. So what we're looking at here is, is um, examples of some uh, integration experience alarms that we have. Uh, the first I want to talk about today is, is how change uh, impacts uh, delivery and experience. So we certainly know today uh, as I'm accessing a, an application uh, you know, that's hosted by a third party or, or an application hosted in the cloud, I'm traversing the internet in almost all those instances as we just talked about. Things are going to change on that connectivity. I, I don't expect to have you know, a consistent hop by hop. Uh, uh, you know, hop by hop path for, for that communication. I expect that to change because I don't control what's going on. My ISPs are implementing changes and there's routing changes and it's nothing but change consistently. Um, so that's important that we manifest that to the operations, but in a way that doesn't overwhelm them with noise. So one of the things that AppNeta does great is it's consistently monitoring the hop by hop topology for all of my network experience paths. This is giving visibility to the operator of what, um, you know, what, uh, what devices are being hit across those WAN connections. So again, we expect that to change, but there can be too much change. You know, we look at an old example of interface flapping where it's consistently changing between two states. Well, we can run into similar situations with, with uh, the routes that traffic is taking. Um, so one of the alarms that we've implemented some intelligence around is looking at uh, network change events. So instead of flooding the operator, as I mentioned, with, with numerous alarms every time something happens, we only want to provide them with interesting information. So we look for patterns or we look for uh, consistency in those changes. So in this first event, we can see that we have a, a network change event and the network change event has occurred multiple times. Um, so we can have a, a basically an indication to say that uh, an excessive number of changes in this instance is greater than 11 in an hour, which essentially means every time we check, there's a change, then we want to raise an alarm. Um, that's to provide visibility, not necessarily indicative of a problem, but to raise operational awareness that, hey, there's consistently change going on here. And then as we can look to in the, you know, eventually in the future, correlate that to performance, that's going to give the operations team the ability to understand how those changes are actually impacting the end user experience. Now, from a workflow perspective in NetOps, we have a couple of ways that you can engage. Um, one of them would be to drill into the performance view and understand how the, the, the performance of that path is, is, is occurring over time. And the second is actually to dig in and take a look at um, the actual path changes over time. So if I select this link here, I can drill into my AppNeta tool and get a clear view of the delivery of that particular path over time. I can see in real time the most recent route that this that this path is taking, including base TCP, UDP, and ICMP. There's certainly going to be differences. And where the problems are detected, I can then drill in and do a deeper route analysis to understand the hop by hop performance over time of this particular uh, this particular um, uh, path. Uh, you can see here the hops for my ISP. 
totally locked up the scrolling. Uh, but I can see I can track this over time. And more importantly, I can then drill in and get an understanding of if I'm experiencing latency or if the connection is, is, is not reliable, if it's dropping out, I can identify where that problem is occurring. So we have our round trip time for each hop within that path. And again, the vast majority of these systems are beyond uh, visibility of that operations team. So there's no other way for them to gain insight into this visibility. And this is one of those examples where if I'm having poor application performance and it happens to be related to uh, a device in, in the Comcast backbone, uh, I can't prove that without this type of information. So I'm gonna sit here chasing my tail while my SLA meter keeps ticking and the application team keeps chasing me, this gives me the information I need to be able to very quickly understand how that traffic is traversing uh, those, uh, those connections that I don't really have access to. Another example I wanna talk about is related to performance. Now, um, being able to troubleshoot connectivity issues is certainly one thing. Performance issues get a little more tricky, uh, certainly to, to troubleshoot. So we really try to make that simple for the users. So I want to show an example and I'm going to weave in another concept and this concept is related to um, what we're doing around uh, baselining or what we call deviation from normal. So here we see a particular trap raised against, a, I'm sorry, a particular alarm uh, raised against one of our paths. And this is indicating that there is a large deviation in my round trip time. This happens to be taking advantage of a few aspects of NetOps, including the ability to uh, determine a percentage of the baseline that I want to, uh, that I care about when it exceeds. In this example, you can see plus 50% of my baseline, as well as the time window. So in this example, I'm, if, I'm basically saying, hey, if, if the round trip time for this path is 50% is greater than it normally is for a half hour out of one hour, I want to raise an alarm. This gives the operation, operator then the ability to go and drill in to identify that abnormal behavior. I can very quickly navigate to the metrics of interest, in this example, utilization performance, and then I can drill into that round trip time. And you can see here how we're providing simple visibility so the operators don't have to do guessing work, right? So we have this uh, in indicator of what quote unquote normal behavior is, these green bars. We call them the green highway, but it just simply reflects the the normal operating range of this particular uh, this particular metric for this particular path. You can see here how we can raise the alarms when the threshold has occurred, and it's it's simple for then the operators to drill in and be able to uh, identify where that problem is. Uh, you can also take advantage of other you know uh, capabilities if I want to look back further, maybe expand that to eight hours. Very simple to do, and now just like that, I've been able to even expand further upon understanding how that value has changed over time and how it deviates from what we consider to be a normal pattern for that particular path. In this example, obviously the round trip time isn't too high and in a normal application, probably not an issue, but if we're looking at you know low latency switching or, or use cases that require very, very precise timings, well, then these types of rules become uh, extremely important. You know, for user application, maybe we have different rules. Maybe it's 200% of baseline for an hour out of two hours. You know, it's really up to the, the use case and, and really giving our customers the ability to customize that experience to meet their specific needs, which we know vary from customer to customer based off of all our experience. Jason, that was great. Um, you really uh, showed the importance of uh, why user experience um, is critical to understanding network delivery impact on it. Um, especially the easy workflows to find the source of any performance degradation, and especially inside of networks that our customers have no visibility into like ISP or cloud. Um, you talked about baselining and deviation from normal, but um, you know why, why is the need for baselining and understanding past and future predictions uh, important to the user experience network delivery right now? All apps are not created equal, um, right? We can we can start there. there there's going to be different tolerances for different types of applications. If I'm looking at voice data, well, then jitter becomes extraordinarily important. If I'm looking at you know high high volume switching, well, then latency becomes extraordinarily important. So there's there's different metrics that I need to look at, but there's not a consistent operational threshold for these because again, they're not all created equal. So it's more along the lines of what's normal and what's acceptable for uh, for a particular application, for a particular set of users. Um, so we want to really highlight when that becomes abnormal. It's a very common triage process, right? If, okay, something's going, going wrong. Um, is it normally going wrong or is it happening always at this particular time of day, right? Being able to drive those insights into 
this is really outside the normal boundaries of how something is typically performing is really going to give operations the ability to then focus like a, a laser focus uh, their triage exercises to kind of drill in and understand what's going on there so again it's about making sure that we're comparing apples to apples making sure that we're where you know different applications are going to have different uh, different uh, performance characteristics. Uh, what's normal is what's important. As long as normal is acceptable, but what's normal is important. So when we get large deviations, that's when it's indicative of a potential problem. Jason, this was great. Um, thank you so much for uh, helping us walk through a experience-driven workflow when it relates to network delivery performance degradation. Um, this is a really, really exciting time, not only for you and I, I mean, to have the inclusion of AppNeta into our network monitoring family, to extend our visibility beyond the edge of the network into these unmanaged networks like ISP, cloud, even my home wireless to look at the health of my home wireless because the degradation could be there. Um, just an exciting time for us and especially an exciting time for our, our customers as well. So Jason, again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jeremy. And we will be back with another episode of the NetOps Expert. Stay tuned.